Let's talk about CSS text overflow property today. Let's have an input box where you have a pretty long string to show. I'm taking input but similar to this, you may have other elements also where you have the limited height and the text is crossing the width because the element has a specific that is limited width. In such a case, you want to show that there is more text but if you see this line here, you cannot make out that there are some more words here inside this text box. That is, the rest of the text is hidden, isn't it? And this is exactly what you want to show to the user that the sentence or line or paragraph does not end here. There are more words here inside this text box or even if there is no text box, you just want the user to know this is not it. So when this text is crossing the limit or I can say overflowing out of this element, you can control how you want it to overflow. Right now, let's try ellipsis. You guys might be knowing about ellipsis. These three dots are called ellipsis. So now, what if I give text overflow ellipsis? Let's check. Did you notice? Look at the text box and now you can see these three dots which mean there is something more ahead of this word, MO. It does not end there. These properties will give you precise control over the rendering of text on the web browser. Do remember that when you do not have input provision where maybe you are using a division, you need to use white space colon no wrap and overflow should be hidden with this property. But right now I have explained in the simplest of ways what the text overflow property is. The syntax for this property goes something like this. You may have the clip ellipsis string initial or inherit let us go through each of these property values with the same example to see how they work first of all let's see clip here the text is clipped or truncated and cannot be seen it is also the default value so here in this example let me just add overflow property to this input element as clip and let's see what happens so here you can see now that it has clipped the text word. As I said, this is the default property. So the text is going to be shown in the same way, even if you do not use this property. The second option is ellipsis. We have already seen this at the beginning. This is a very popular text overflow property and is the most widely used. This value displays three dots to show the clipped text, which is displayed within the area, decreasing the amount of text. This is how your text will look like if you use this property. The next option is string. So by using this property, the developer can use the string that is the custom character when the text is clipped. The string value for the text overflow property is not supported in most web browsers. You should better avoid this. I am using the Firefox browser to show you this example as Firefox supports this property. Here I will just use a string of my choice, let's say three dashes and you see the output. So we have the three dashes displayed here. The initial value is used to set an element's CSS property to its default value. That is this value will set the text overflow property to its default value, which again is like the clip property, which we have seen earlier. And this is how it looks. This will inherit from its parent elements property. That is the value will set the text overflow property to the value of the parent element. Let's see how it works in our example. I'm going to add a division to my HTML code and also add CSS for division and input here in the CSS pane. So for div, I am keeping the overflow property as ellipsis and for input, I will use the inherit. Let's see what happens. Now you can see that because the property of div is ellipsis, the input element has inherited that property and is showing the text with the same property. Again, do remember that text overflow can only happen on block or inline block level elements because the element needs to have a width in order to be overflowed. 